you feeling, Simone? I feel great. <laughs> I feel like I look great. And also I feel like at the end of this, I'm gonna have some superpowers. Yeah, I hope there's gonna be some sort of meltdown. And then I'm gonna have infinite strength. For the Higgs, I, we say the Higgs, of course, we could find other Higgs. That's not, you know, dis disallowed, but um, imagine that there's just this Higgs. What we're doing with it now is we're turning it into a tool. So it's a tool to explore. The way to explore with this particle, which only gets produced, say, one in a you know, billion times, and we only see in one in a trillion collisions, do we actually see it, uh, we want to produce a lot of them. By producing a lot of them, you want to measure all of its properties, okay? More, the more you have, the better precision you have from the statistics, right? So one of the properties, perhaps one of the most important ones you can measure is how it decays to other particles. We have predictions from the standard model which are pretty precise. They say this many times it should decay to two electrons and two muons, this many times to just two muons, for example, or two tau particles or B particles or whatever. You have all these predictions. The better you can measure that, the better chance there is to find out that maybe it's decaying to something else which we're not measuring. For example, dark matter. So if, you know, we know, um, you know, we know thanks to a brilliant woman, astronomer, Vera Rubin, who unfortunately left us this past year, that, you know, galaxies are made up mainly of something we've never measured. There is this thing called dark matter. If it's a fundamental particle and it's massive, then it couples with the Higgs, it interacts with the Higgs. So that should mean that when we measure, when we count all these different particles that we see, there's there something should be, missing. Yes, there's something missing. We can't see it. Yes. Physicists are something weird. They want there. to find the broken. They we want, want to break okay, model. Yeah. We want to find stuff we can't see. One of the things that I realized, like one of the faults I've had in my brain when thinking about CERN is like the size of the magnets. Because I've always heard about these like huge magnets being here. And they're actually just like the size. This is what creates the, the field that accelerates the particles. So this is like the size of the magnets. I mean they come in these big tubes, but this is the one that's actually the magnet. I kind of thought of it just being like this force size magnet being like what up. I don't know if it's underwhelming or overwhelming, like the, the field or the strength of the field that this can create, I'm going to go with that I'm impressed rather than unimpressed. Okay, I stand corrected. These are the actual magnets and they're a little bit bigger than what we had over there. Still smaller than I thought it would be, but yeah, this is a pretty impressive magnet. It's all right in here. happens in, in the big collider and a bunch of data is being collected like what happens between that and it being stored right down here so first in one of the four experiments they will use that trigger system to select the data that is of interest and it's only a small small fraction of that one out of 10 million then it's sent to the data center here there are 35,000 kilometers of optic fiber for this and it arrives there and we do three things so we do the initial reconstruction of the data, we copy it on tape storage to keep it forever, and then we distribute it to 170 data centers worldwide. And how long is it? Because I'm thinking like, for example, when you discovered the Higgs boson, it wasn't like the collision happened, some green light started flashing and like balloons were falling from the sky. It, it wasn't in that way. Like it was, no. it must have, how long was it from the collision and to actually discovering it? So, for instance, in 2010, we had the first physics data, uh, thanks to collisions, and then they were able to announce the discovery of the Higgs boson in July 2012. Two years. To be able. Wow. And now, actually, uh, with the way the LHC is working, you would have needed far less time to get the same results. So that's really dependent on how, how much data you're producing 
So the data that's right here might convey some particles that we don't know of. Yeah. Like we might have all the information we need right here. Yeah, but we don't have enough yet maybe to be able to say that. So we're at the CERN machine shop because like when you're building a hardware collider of this size, obviously you can't buy parts off of Amazon. So you have to like custom make everything and this is the place that they make it. And the machines they have here are pretty wild. This CNC is like the size of the San Francisco apartment.